Well, hello there. It is Wednesday, January the 3rd, and our scripture for today is Genesis chapter 7, 8, and 9. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, how amazing and wonderful you are to us. We always want to praise your name and thank you for what you do, how you provide, how you uh, bless us daily. So Lord, as we seek to honor you today, uh, I, I just pray that you will do that. You will bless us and help us today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So in chapter seven, Noah, his three sons and their wives, eight people in total, along with seven pairs of the clean animals and one pair of unclean animals, seven pairs of all kinds of birds enter the ark. All of these enter the ark. And seven days later, the flood came. But before that, God closed the door of the ark. It says the fountains of the great deep and the windows of heaven were opened up and it rained 40 days and nights. The flood waters rose up covering the mountains more than 20 feet and every creature perished. Everything on dry land died, the scripture says. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark and the waters surged on the earth 150 days. Chapter eight, uh, God remembers them and the waters began to decrease on the earth. After seven months of float, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede for three more months. Then the tops of the mountains could be seen. About a month and a half or more than a month and a half later, Noah released a dove that returned to him with an olive leaf in its beak. A week later, he sent it out and it did not return. The water, uh, the water was drying up and the earth could be seen again. God called Noah out of the ark along with his family and all the animals. Noah built an altar and offered sacrifices to the Lord. The Lord God received the sacrifice and promised to never again destroy every living thing in judgment against mankind. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night will not cease. In chapter 9, God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth. They are allowed to kill animals and eat the meat now without the blood, of course. And God reminds them that human bloodshed will be called into account by judging and judged by God. But you, he said, be fruitful and multiply, spread out over the earth and multiply on it. Now, this command is, is very important. A little bit later on, we get to the Tower of Babel where they did not spread out. Uh, they weren't, they were opposing and rebelling against this command. God judges them. But God covenanted with Noah and all creatures that he would never flood the earth again. The sign of this covenant will be the rainbow. Shem, Ham, and Japheth are Noah's sons, and the scripture says, from them the whole earth was populated. Noah, after the flood, planted a vineyard. Since he was a farmer, that's what he did. He grew grapes, he made wine, and drank and became drunk. Uh, by the way, this should be a warning to anyone. Uh, drinking never has its benefits, especially too much drinking. Ham saw his father drunk and naked and showed no regard or respect for him. Uh, he went outside and told his brothers about it. Shem and Japheth covered their father without looking. After Noah sobered up and found out what had happened, he cursed Ham by cursing his son, Canaan, prophesying that Canaan would be the lowest of slaves to his brothers. Noah then blessed Shem and Japheth for their acts. Noah lived 350 years after the flood, so he lived to be 950 years old. Now, if he was born, according to the timeline that we talked about earlier, if he was born around the year 1050, 1056, then that would have put him dying somewhere in the neighborhood of the year 2000 years after creation. Now, you, you might be saying, Brother Jeff, why is this important? Well, I want to I bring out just a little bit later as we're studying the genealogy of um, Abraham and, and all of those that they weren't very far removed from Noah's godly witness 
his testimony of going through the flood. So those that would rebel in the, in the years of Babylon, uh, they rebelled having a godly witness close by. All right, so let me get my thought for today out here. All right, here we go. We don't know the day that our lives will end, so be prepared. Christ is revealed through the ark. Christ is our ark of safety. In 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10, it says, Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. Praise the Lord. All right. You guys have a great day and God bless you.